housing bills would address wealth inequality. And this is by a guest commentary. Okay, and so a lot of people are not really um, aware of a lot of the things that have been going on um, when it comes to the zoning. But a lot of it, in summary, it says Senate Bills 9 and 10 correct exclusionary zoning issues that prevent affordable housing and put Black and Hispanic Latino Californians out of the running for home ownership by Adams Briones and Robert Apodaca, the special to Cal Matters. And so as millions of renters stare down the end of California's eviction moratorium and stories of the thousands of evictions that have taken place despite the moratorium are learned, we can clearly see the short and long-term effects of pandemic on Californians. And so this is in regards to California and in regards, you know, in part in most places where we've seen the effects that have happened where thousands of evictions have occurred. And so it is has crystallized just how many Californians decide whether they can pay rent or buy groceries despite living in the wealthiest state in the country. And so it would be the simplistic, however, to assume that the pandemic pushed these families to the point. So COVID-19 didn't create the state's stark wealth inequality or housing affordability crisis. It just illuminated them. And so California's wealth gap has been growing for the last 20 years, especially between Californians of color and white households. So in LA, black and Latino households have one cent for every dollar of wealth held by the average white household. So the same holds true in San Francisco and cities across the state. So California's community builders and many American home ownership is primarily way to uh, foster financial security, build wealth, create upward mobility. Home ownership rates are already lower in California than the national average. More than 60% of the white own their homes, okay, while other only black, uh, 35% of blacks and just over 40% of Latinos are homeowners. And so in this trend, exclusionary zoning laws that have and the effect of excluding low-income residents and people of color, such as minimum lot sizes, prohibitions uh, of multifamily housing, plays a staring role, a starring role. And so basically what it's saying is there's certain zoning uh, rules where they can build only certain types of housing uh, structures in areas, and they have these um just like uh, as people knew and back in the Jim Crow era and, and, and then even after the Jim Crow era had was supposed to be outlawed, they had like um, areas where there were homes where they have these covenants where people could make uh, decisions on what types of homes should be built by or in their area by their housing and what what structure should be built and the zoning, uh, there were zoning rules put in place. And so a lot of the people will get together in a, uh, like a meeting and say, we don't want this built by our homes where we don't want these types of housings in our community. And so the consequences of exclusionary zoning are multifaceted as long as multifamily homes are illegal on more than two thirds of the residential land in California will never be able to build enough housing to meet the needs of our state. And so that let alone reduce housing prices. And so that has a lot to do with the reason why homes are expensive as well. So zoning regulations that only permit single family homes force builders to prioritize larger homes that are by design more expensive, effectively reserving home ownership for wealthier and primary white Californians who have more generational wealth and opportunities. So this is why we're seeing some of the issues we're seeing where 
they don't have enough. Um, they, they, the supply to demand is not matching up. And so even incremental changes to these laws, like simply allowing duplexes where currently one house stands, often are met with extreme opposition from the vocal neighbors who benefit from exclusions. Okay, so, but this duplexes are smaller homes tend to be more affordable choice for first time home buyers, mid to lower income families and people of color and limiting development of the homes is uh, also limiting the ability of these potential buyers to become homeowners as well as well as their hopes of ever building any wealth. And so this is what has been a big defined uh, reason or uh, a big determined reason why we have the issues we have faced with right now. So this year in California legislature has a chance to pass two bills. So that would make it easier for low and middle income Californians to afford housing. A Senate bill nine would make it legal to build smaller, natural, more affordable second units to create access to more opportunities for homeownership while pro uh, protecting existing tenants from displacement. And Senate Bill 10 would establish a streamlined path for local governments to rezone neighborhoods for up to about 10, un 10 units. And so if they choose to do so, dr drastically improving the ability to build new homes as well. And so together these bills would add hundreds of thousands of smaller, more affordable homes to states, housing supply, making homeowners possible for black and Latino Californians. So the pandemic's economic and social toll will be felt by millions of families for years to come. And so, but the while it has raised the the curtain on California's wealth inequality, it also has given us opportunity to reckon with it as well because exclusionary zoning needs to end because without systemic change in how we treat housing development in our state, families of color will continue to be barred from the wealth building opportunity that have benefited so many other families through generations of home ownership. And so that's basically just like Colorado is banning our, our, our barring, trying to keep out the CRT. And, you know, they, they, they do a lot of jobs of, of voting against and excluding and, and making laws to zone out and, and, and keep out and, and wall up. And so that is, it's the same thing. This is, you know, so you're getting barred from communities because they don't want certain people living in those communities. That's basically what it is. And so that's where all of this is coming from. So those two bills are important. And um, it is, uh, let me see, it is the Senate Bill 9 and the Senate Bill 10. And so these things affect most of us and some people are not really realizing that that is where a lot of this is coming from so that's why i said it really has not ended it's just renamed it's called exclusionary zoning and so like what they had i think a good example for that was uh i know you know people have their commentary on who was the ones that were the creator of the the, the series called them but also you, the one of the, there were several creators. It wasn't just one. They were saying it was one creator, and because he wasn't Jordan Peele, it was sort of like a, a another version of Jordan Peele's thing. But the Lena uh, Lena Waif, and then there were several other people who worked on that project. And so there were black people that were working on that project. If people have read that, and they didn't. Um, that they just read into the main person that they saw uh, working on that project uh, for that series them. But they showed a particular scene where this black family from North Carolina, they, they're being mis they're, they're living in the Jim Crow era and then they, they moved to the north um, to uh, what is Los Angeles to uh, Compton. 
And, and this was in a time when Compton was all white residents, which people don't don't even know about that. Yeah, some young people think Compton was always black residents. At one time it was white. This was before the white flight. And then they show a horrible scene uh, where the family is being tormented by a covenant. And it's a group of white residents that basically they didn't want this engineer, this black family to move in. He had gotten a job uh, as an, I believe, an engineer in uh, that area of Los Angeles, and he moved his family out to Compton, and they bought a home, and they did everything in their power to try to torture these people to move them out. And so that was an example. It was um, a covenant, and the group got together. They band together to try to get rid of this family, and it was looked more like a horror story, but it's... Those covenants have never really left. That's just an extreme version of something like that. I'm not saying that's the way people are. You know, it's just different now today. It's like people, they don't want you to move in their neighborhoods. They'll try to make laws so that, you know, or try to go against, they'll try to vote against laws. Maybe they'll try to vote against these bills to try to keep things the way they are. You know, that's that's the, the worst it is. Um case scenario and so they'll try to vote against these things because they know if you're not reading about it or you don't understand about it and you don't know that these are the reasons why the determining factors why you can't live in certain communities is is because they band together and they sign their signature just like they signed a, a bunch of signatures to get rid of Gavin Newsom because he's a Democrat and they don't like Democrats in holding those positions. So you've got all these um, militant groups. They try to, if they don't like it, that there's this moratorium in place. They want to get rid of that moratorium. They feel he has something to do with it. He has something to do with the lockdowns. They're going to band together and get as many signatures together so they can, they can vote you out. And it's the same thing where they're doing that with the housing. They don't want you living there. So they're going to get as many people together to try to create these laws in your sleep. So they can make it so that it's harder for families that are black and Latino to buy homes in these communities because they don't want you living beside them because it's a problem. Just like when you go to certain schools, and I've noticed this, where it'll you'll see more Latino kids, you'll see maybe more black kids, but you don't really see any white kids going to the, some of the public schools, depending on what areas it is. You see more of the white kids going to private schools. And you probably see a lot more of it now because of the CRT battle. And it's going to be more or more homeschooling. There might be more homeschooling. And just like the one lady, she says, oh, I would, well, I would flood the private schools. That's what she said in her video. So I'm just saying, you know, she's flood the private schools. They're already flooding the private schools. They were doing that before CRT, CRT was an issue. And so now with the housing thing, it, all of these things connect. And so, um, yeah, so would be, you know, you got a nice engineering job or maybe you're a doctor and maybe you're doing law practice, maybe you're a teacher. Uh, I read something really crazy where um, they kept teachers out. They tried to keep teachers out of neighborhoods. People that are working with people's children and they, you know, academics, you've been to college, you, you've been to more college than anybody can put out there and you followed all of the, the rules, but they don't want you to be able to teach in the community. They don't want you to be able to live in the community where you teach. Happily. They don't want you to. Or maybe they don't, now you now you got it, it's changing. They want to put cameras in the classroom. They don't want you to teach certain things in their communities, you know, because they're afraid of what you say. What did you say? Race what? Or indigenous what? Or, you know, inequality what? They don't even want that word. Wealth gap what? You know, so, you know, there's all this stuff going on. So I'm just saying that, you know, it's it's crazy, but this this makes a lot of sense. That's I'm you connect the dots. 
to where a lot of this is coming from. But yeah, they have to they have to put bills together so that they can create a more inclusiveness for people of color to be able to begin to even start where our problems have always be, happened. You, generational wealth has not been afforded us. We're not been allowed to even partake in that, a lot of us. And then if we are, we're harassed to get out of it or to sell or to move. And that has happened to some people in real life. They've moved in areas they they were tortured, they were harassed. I believe that that I did read that there was a family that happened to. That happened to family where they were harassed to move out. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so there are a lot of people who were denied fair treatment in so many ways than one. And so housing, like they say 20 years, I believe it might have been even longer than 20 years. So, um, Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at Miami, for example, in 1966, Mayor Chuck Hall, he sends the first, first wrecking ball into homes of African Americans near downtown, fulfilling the city's plan to relocate them to a distant ghetto. So when this one where local tactics were used, and this is not this article, but I'm reading from some real history here of why we're in the situation we're in. So when Frank Stevenson and his carpoolers needed housing near the new Ford plant, and FHA and VA insured subdivisions were rapidly filling the area between Milipedas and the African American communities of Richmond and Oakland. So the most active developer was David Bohannon, is his name, who had built the whites only rolling wood subdivision just outside Richmond in 1943. So the following year, he created a massive whites only San Lorenzo village about five miles south of Oakland border. With more than 5,000 units and 17,000 residents, this was in San Lorenzo Village, okay? And it was the nation's largest wartime government-insured project intended for workers at naval shipyards and supports factories. And like the homes in the rolling wood, each house included a bedroom with a separate uh, entrance so the owner could rent it to another war worker. The development was financed by a $7 million FHA authorized loan from the Bank of America and the American Trust Company. So as was the case with the FHA development, houses were sold at relatively low prices so as to be within reach of war workers. And the deeds included restrictive covenants to prevent future resales to African Americans. Page 115, Chapter 8, Local Tactics, The Color of Law. And so, A Forgotten History of How Our Government Segregated America by Richard Rothenstein. So these things are not fake. These things happen. This is why we're dealing with what we're dealing with today. Okay, and so it has impacted us even today. And so that is the reason why they have to come out with these housing bills to try to try to correct all of the wrongs that were done 
to people of color and have always been done. That is the reason why they try to teach the CRT because there is a lot that has been done to select groups for particular purposes of intention for one group to succeed and others to fail. And so I just wanted to leave you with that. So having said that, I'm going to let this one go. And yeah, wealth inequality is real. <laughs>